Namaste. So, first of all, in this first chapter, Vidyaranya has made an analysis of consciousness and its objects. Consciousness is divided into four states, Jagrat, Svapna, Sushupti, and Turiya. And the objects of consciousness are divided into the 24 tattvas of Sankhya, plus the contents of the Antakarana, the inner organ of mind, intelligence, and false ego. There is also an analysis of the three bodies, gross, subtle, and causal, and the five sheaths, the food sheath, anamaya kosha, pranamaya kosha, the energy sheath, manamaya kosha, the mind sheath, vijnanamaya kosha, the intelligence sheath, and anandamaya kosha, the bliss sheath. And all these objects are maya. They are all to be done away with by the meditator, leading to the state where the self is manifest, is obvious. In ordinary consciousness, they cover the self and prevent the self-realization. But in meditation, in samadhi, they are revealed. So now the next five verses reveal that samadhi. Dhyatridhyane parityajya kramadhyayaika gocharam nirvati deepa vachitam samadhir abhidiyate. When the mind gradually leaves off the ideas of the meditator and the act of meditation, and is merged in the sole object of meditation, that is to say, the self, and is steady like the flame of a lamp in a breezeless spot. It is called the superconscious state, samadhi. Compare verses 55 to 61 with chapter 7, verse 280. Nivata means breezeless, not airless. As air is necessary for the lamp, so also the subtle antakarana, mind stuff minus the modifications, remains in samadhi. Otherwise, the body will be disintegrated. Text 56. Vrtayas tu tadane magnata apyat magochara smarana danumiyante Vyutitasya samutitat. Though in samadhi there is no subjective cognition of the mental function having the self as its object, its continued existence in that state is inferred from the recollection after coming out of samadhi. With the termination of samadhi, the mind resumes its subject-object activity and recollects that it was in samadhi. And hence, its presence, then, is inferred in the waking state. So it is wrong to say, as is generally done, that the mind itself is dissolved in samadhi. It is the modifications of the mind that cease in that state. Text 57. Vritti namanu vrittistu prayat nat pratamadapi Adrishta sakridabhyasa sanskara sachirad bhavet. The mind continues to be fixed in Paramatma in the state of samadhi as a result of the effort of will made prior to its achievement and helped by the merits of previous births and the strong impression created through constant efforts at getting into samadhi. Even though during samadhi there is no continuous exertion of willpower to keep the mind fixed on the self, the momentum works. Text 58 Yatadipo nivatasta ityadi bhirane kadha bhagavan nimame vartang arjunaya nyarupayat the same idea Sri Krishna pointed out to Arjuna in various ways. For example, when he compares the steady mind 
to the flame of a lamp in a breezeless spot. Bhagavad Gita 619. Text 59. Anada viha sansare sanchita karma kotayaha anena vilayam yanti shuddho dharmo vivardhate. As a result of this nirvikalpa samadhi, millions of results of actions accumulated in this beginningless world over past and present births are destroyed, and pure dharma, helpful to the realization of truth, grows. This experience promotes righteous conduct, etc., automatically, though the sadhaka does not seek them, and leads to a direct cognition of Brahman, which really destroys all the actions. Compare Mundaka Upanishad 2.2.8, Bhagavad Gita 4.3-7. Text 60. Dharma megham mimam prahu samadhin yoga vitta maha varshat yesha yato dharmam ritadhara sahasrasha the experts in yoga call this samadhi a rain cloud of dharma because it pours forth countless showers of the bliss of dharma. Compare Yoga Sutra, Kaivalyapada 29. Since he desires liberation, he does not achieve the other world, but all the obstacles for liberation are removed. Other people seeing and serving him are freed from sin and attain desired objects. Text 61. Amuna vasana jale nisheshang pravilapite samulon mulite punya papake karma sanchaye. The entire network of desires is fully destroyed, and the accumulated actions known as merits and demerits are fully rooted out by this samadhi. Good and bad actions the sources of empirical experience and of the continuity of empirical life are destroyed along with the impressions inimical to knowledge. So, this is samadhi. There are a lot of wrong ideas floating around about samadhi, probably coming from people who haven't actually experienced it, such as fixing the mind on the object of meditation, no, there is no effort, there is no activity, there is no action, there is no modification of the mind. Vritti, huh? Nivritti, near vikalpa. Vikalpa is a desire. So there's no desire, no vritti, no modification of the mind, no action, no subject object duality. Huh? All that simply passes away. And what is left is one's identity with the self. Of course, that is already existing, but it is simply uncovered by the process of neti neti, rejecting all the different objects and modifications of consciousness and the mind. So in this state, one is experiencing the beneficial results of many, many past efforts in sadhana over many lifetimes. This is not something you can achieve, you know, in a weekend retreat. <laughs> Get real. No, meditation is an exalted state of consciousness. It is turiya. It is that state in which the self is one. There is no object. There is no second. That means Brahman is one without a second. And we are one with Brahman. Of course, that's a nonsensical statement. <laughs> but see, this is where we run into the limitations of language itself. As long as we're using language to try to symbolically represent these exalted states of consciousness, we're going to get into trouble especially if we try to take it literally, because at this stage, language can only be figurative, 
metaphorical, symbolic, and not an accurate description because the actual thing that's happening is indescribable. So when the mind comes out of samadhi, then it can recollect, oh, yes, I was in samadhi. Just like when we wake up in the morning after a good night's sleep and we say, ah, I slept deeply, I'm rested now. This is because there are no objects and there are no modifications of the mind in samadhi, just as in deep sleep, sushupti. The difference is in samadhi, there is awareness. In sushupti, there is only ignorance. This awareness comes from the fact that samadhi is entered into deliberately as an object of meditation. In the beginning, one holds Brahman in any way as an object, whether covered by some symbol like prana or space or time or consciousness, awareness, or whatever object one uses to get in touch with Brahman. Then when that object merges into Brahman, Brahman itself is known. This is the authentic samadhi. It is not that by chanting some mantra you attain samadhi, but by the focusing of the mind through the mantra to Brahman as a substrate, one gains samadhi. And for that to happen, the mantra has to go away. The object has to go away. The symbol has to go away. And only Brahman remains. So this is the nature of samadhi. And what is the value of samadhi? Samadhi wipes away all karmic results from previous activities and the future activities, leaving only the karma of the present life intact. This is called prarabdha karma, the karma that is due for fructification in this life itself. So the body continues uh, because if the mind was completely destroyed, if the karma was completely destroyed, the, the body would just collapse and be finished. So there has to remain some karma to continue the body long enough to attain complete immersion in samadhi and also for the benefit of others who see or serve the yogi in deep samadhi and that can be during continuous samadhi, during apparent external activities of the realized being. So that is why the darshan of the enlightened being is valued so highly in the yogic tradition. Now, in modern days, this has fallen off. And because of this, it's very difficult to reach samadhi for people today. They have no association with those who have samadhi. So it's very difficult for them to catch the vibe, you know, to, to hook into the energy flow that is samadhi and to be born along with the current into the realization of Brahman, the complete enlightenment. But by taking the association, even through a book or a video, of people who have attained it, then one can realize this state of samadhi for oneself. And this is the, the hard rain of dharma, huh? sprinkling on everything and purifying it like the celestial Ganges come to the earth for the purification of all humankind. Aum Tat Sat. Aum Shakti Aum Aum Namah Shivaya